Mr. President, uh, the distinguished senator from Michigan has made an eloquent speech about the importance of fully funding the Department of Homeland Security. What's astonishing to me is that she didn't listen to her own speech the first time the Republican majority leader brought up the House passed bill to fully fund Homeland Security and the Democrats blocked it. And why she didn't listen to that speech the second time the Republican majority leader brought up the House passed Democrat House passed bill to fully fund uh, Homeland Security and the Democrats blocked it. And why she didn't listen to that speech the third time. The third time the Republican majority leader brought up the House passed proposal to fully fund Homeland Security and the Democrats blocked it. And why not the fourth time? The fourth time the Republican leader brought up a bill passed by the House of Representatives to fully fund Homeland Security and the Democrats blocked that. Now this is the fifth vote we're going to have to fully fund Homeland Security, which we which we want to do and which we voted to do four times. So let's not confuse the issue here. I mean, I'm amazed they come up with this stuff on the other side. Uh, you'd think that we're living in a different world than we are and than the rest of us are. The House has passed legislation to fully fund Homeland Security, every single penny of it. Senate Republicans have brought it up four times. The president knows that, four times. We voted yes, they voted no. This is the fifth opportunity they will have to fully fund social, uh, uh, Homeland Security. And I hope, I hope we can do that. I hope we can do that. But let's not be recreating events that never happened. Let's recognize the fact that for two weeks, for two weeks, Republicans have been prepared to fully fund Homeland Security and the Democrats themselves have blocked it. Not once, not twice, not three times, four times, four times. Now, Mr. President, if I may switch gears, I came to the floor to talk on another subject, one which fortunately has bipartisan support. And I'm glad to speak about something like that because I think the people of this country gave us and the Republican majority an opportunity this year to come to Washington and shake things up, but get things done. And in, the, and in the Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions Committee, we're working hard to do just that. With Senator Murray, the ranking Democrat on the committee, just as I worked with Senator Harkin in the last Congress, when our committee reported out 25 different pieces of legislation, which became law. So we got things done in the last Congress, and I'm fully confident that Senator Murray and I and the other members of our committee can do that in this Congress. Now that doesn't mean we agree on everything. We don't agree on a lot of things. I mean, if you had to pick a, a group of liberals and a group of conservatives and line them up, our committee would probably have as much difference as any committee in the Congress. But we've also got about 30% of the jurisdiction in the Congress. That's what Ted Kennedy used to say when he was in the United States Senate. And we know it's our responsibility to get things done. We're working hard on fixing No Child Left Behind. We're working with Secretary Burwell and the President on, on finding ways to, to move discoveries and devices uh, through the National Institutes of Health and the Food and Drug Administration into the medicine cabinets. And I see the Senator from Maryland on the floor yesterday. We worked together to hear a report that the Senator from Maryland and I and uh, uh, the Senator from Colorado, Senator Bennett, and the Senator from Colorado, Senator Burr, asked for uh, two years ago, which is to take a look at all the federal regulations governing higher education, our 6,000 colleges and universities, and give us an assessment of how much they cost. Give us an assessment of how much confusion and duplication there is. Give us an assessment of how many times since 1965 and the eight different times we've reauthorized the Higher Education Act, of how often we'd fail to weed the garden, how often have we instead just dump new laws, new regulations on top of old ones, and tell us exactly what to do. And Chancellor Zeppos of Vanderbilt University and, and the Chancellor of Kerwin of, of the University of Maryland gave us this report Senator Mikulski was there, I was there. Senator Murray, Senator Burr, Senator Bennett was there. It was a very impressive report. I won't speak long about it because I see the Senator from Maryland would like 
to speak, but I would like to take about five minutes and say these things. It's sometimes best to tell a story to underscore a point. And here's story one. Vanderbilt University hired the Boston Consulting Group to tell the university how much it spent, the university spent, in complying with federal rules and regulations for higher education in a single year. According to the Boston Consulting Group, Vanderbilt University last year spent $150 million complying with federal rules and regulations. That's 11% of all of its expenditures. That adds about $11,000 to the tuition of each one of 12,000 students at the university. That's absolutely absurd, Mr. President. Absolutely absurd that somehow or another that could happen. Or a second example, um, the, the, the student aid form that 20 million families fill out every year. It's 108 questions long. Our committee has been told that two questions would do the job for 96% of the families. What's your income? What's your family size? A bipartisan group of us have introduced that. Uh, that would save millions of hours, millions of dollars across the country. Or here's a third example. The head of the National Academy of Sciences says that 42% of the time of an investigator on a research project is spent on administrative tasks. 42% of the time, I asked the head of the National Academies, what would be a reasonable amount of time? He said about 10%. Mr. President, we spend 30 billion taxpayer dollars a year through colleges and universities on research projects. If we could save a billion of that $30 by reducing that 42% closer to 10, we could fund a thousand more multi-year investigations into cancer research, Ebola research, vaccines, and we should do that. So this is an enormously promising report. 10 years ago, the senator from Maryland and I worked on a, on, on a report called Rising Above the Gathering Storm. We had asked a group of distinguished Americans to tell us the 20 things that we might do in Congress to help make our country more competitive in the world. And they gave us the 20 things and it formed a blueprint and we passed most of them and eventually funded most of them. So I think this report, which we received yesterday, has the opportunity to be as important as rising above the gathering storm that became the America Competes Act. It is a blueprint for how we can reduce overregulation, simplify rules, save money, make consumer protection clear, keep tuition down, find more money for research, and let colleges and universities spend their time and money educating students instead of filling out forms. So I thank Senator Mikulski from Maryland, Senator Bennett from Colorado, Senator Burr from North Carolina, and my partner Senator Murray on the HELP Committee for this. I would ask unanimous consent to include in the record my opening statement from yesterday's uh, hearing, followed by pages one through six of the report that was presented to us yesterday. And I yield the floor.